Greetings, dear friends, fellow programmers, and those aspiring to be. I would like to welcome you back to my channel. I'm Marco, your guide on this amazing .NET related journey. Today, we're diving into a super cool topic. I'm talking about raw SQL queries executed in ASP.NET Core 8 using Entity Framework Core. And now, if that sounds interesting or fun to you, I would like to kindly invite you to sit back and enjoy the ride. So, before we begin, I have a question for you. Why would we use raw SQL when ORMs are basically designed to allow us not to use raw SQL, right? Well, ORMs are designed to make our lives easier, to allow us not to have to write SQL queries directly and make our lives easier by converting results and converting parameters and executing everything for us, generating scripts and overall making our lives easier. But right now we are going in a different direction. We are going backwards. Well, there are certain scenarios where we need every single bit of performance from our application. And in those situations, we do not have enough moving space to allow Entity Framework to potentially make a mistake while generating SQL. So in those cases, we want to have 100% explicit control over the query that is going to be executed against the database. And in those scenarios, we can do just that by using raw SQL. Of course, in order to do that, you have to be a pretty darn good SQL developer. You have to be able to write those robust queries that will have insane performance. But I do not doubt you, my friend, at all. I'm sure you will master SQL and become a true boss at it if you are not already a boss. Okay, right now I think is a great moment to reference back our example from the previous video where we spoke about pizzeria. And if we have it in this scenario and somebody enters the store and wants a very specific type of pizza that is custom, that is not covered by regular menu, and that person is very important to you and you're ready to go all the way to make them comfortable and enjoy their pizza, you will want to use something custom to make it happen. You will need custom ingredients, you will need custom process for making the pizza, and maybe you will need to serve it in a custom way. Well, that is exactly what raw SQL queries allow us to do with our database. Do not take my word for it, let me show you what I mean. So, our first task is going to be dedicated to just fetching existing data from the database. Let's say we want to fetch all customers that created an order in the last 30 days. So, to do that using raw SQL scripts, we have to do the following. First, we need to make a script. And that is exactly what we are doing right here. We are basically creating a simple select statement where we have created an alias for customers that is going to be letter C and we are fetching everything from customers database table and we want to join customers database table with orders database table on customer ID. And of course, we have created an alias for our orders. It's going to be letter O. And finally, we need to filter out all the customers which did not have orders in the last 30 days. So we need to make the following statement. We need the condition which is going to be we are checking whether order date is greater or equal to the date minus 30 days. So basically that way we are joining customers and orders database table because customers database table doesn't know whether this customer has placed an order in, in the last 30 days. So we need orders database table to fetch that information. And then we filter customers that have indeed created an order in the last 30 days. And after that is done and we have our script ready, it's just time to actually execute it. And we are doing that by using the following notation. We are using our DB context and customers DB set and we're executing from SQL raw, which is a method provided by Entity Framework Core 
that we have at our disposal to which we can provide a SQL query we want to be executed. And of course, in the end, we want to convert that iQueryable into a list of customers. After that, we'll just be printing them out in our console. Let me run the code and see what happens. And as we can see here, this query right here we are executing seems fairly similar, or to be more exact, it looks exactly like the query we provided here. It's from A to Z exactly the same as the one here. So we are executing the query we just wrote here in a string. So when it gets executed, we receive back our results, which is we have two customers who placed the order in last 30 days, which makes perfect sense because when we go back to our entities and take a look at our seeding data, we will see that we have 15 customers out of which ID 1 and 2 were displayed. And when we go to our orders, we can see that our customer ID is 1 and 2. So those are two customers we just got as a result. And when it comes to order date, I'm just putting date time now. So they're displayed for sure, because now is less than 30 days old. Makes sense, right? And yes, that means that our results make perfect sense and that our raw SQL query executed flawlessly. It's exactly like crafting a custom pizza for our customer. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but in reality, in most cases, when we are fetching the data from the database, we need to send some parameters. For example, we want to fetch customers who have the name we searched for. And in order to make that happen, we need to send a parameter to the database. And my friend, that can be a very tricky thing to do because there are some people who enjoy breaking stuff. And there is a thing called SQL injection, which basically is something used by people who do malicious things to break your database or to steal your data or to drop your database completely. So we want to prevent that from happening. And the best way to do it is just use built-in features provided by Entity Framework Core. Because people who work there were very smart and they gave us the option to use SQL parameter and to provide those values to that parameter and then use it. That way we will be safe and not expose our database to SQL injection issues. So what I'm saying here is, let's say we want to fetch all users where the name is equal to name we provided as a parameter. Let's say somebody is searching for a user and we are using select statement where we are fetching everything from customer database table and we are using where statement to just make sure that we want only customers where name is equal to name we provided. So to do this and make this happen, we will use the same notation as in our first example. We are using from SQL raw, we are going to pass the SQL script we just created, and also we will provide a SQL parameter called name. Now, after that is done, we will convert the iQueryable of customers into a list of customers by using to list async method and we will be good to go. So after that, we'll just print the results and that's it. Now that we have executed our query, we can see that we actually managed to find a user in our database with the name Jane Doe. And also we can see here is our script exactly the way we left it. But what we managed to achieve by utilizing SQL parameter is that we are kind of safe from all the SQL injections. What we can do to be even safer is to introduce our own custom validation on every parameter we are receiving from the outside world. And basically, whenever you're exposing the opportunity for somebody else to enter something, you definitely want to introduce a lot of security and validation. Unless, of course, you want your application to be destroyed, which I hope you do not, because our applications are our babies. Now, one last thing I want to talk with you about before we are done with this video is going to be dedicated to the fact that you can combine raw SQL and link you. Those two can be mixed. 
So let us jump to our example and see exactly what I'm talking about. As you can see right here, we want to fetch all the orders where every order is less than days, days old. So this number of days old to be more exact and clear. So after we have fetched all the orders that are given number of days old or newer, we are then going to fetch them from the database by using exactly the same notation as in previous example. We are again using SQL parameter because why not? And when we get those results, we want to, for example, populate them with customer related data. So for each order that we have fetched by using raw SQL, we want to fetch customer data as well. And in this example, I will be doing it with a very stupid practice you do not want to do because we are aiming for performance on one side and I'm doing something stupid like this on the other side. So why is this stupid? Well, when you think about it, for every order that we have created, we will create a separate query and execute it against the database to fetch a customer for that particular order. So we will basically have n plus one number of queries that are going to be executed when the first one is to fetch orders. And then we have number of orders queries that are going to be fetching customer data. So it's a terrible thing to do, but basically I just wanted to show you that you can use LinkU in combination with raw SQL data fetching. And if you do not trust me, this is going to work just fine. But the only issue is going to be the fact that, as you can see here, we are executing a query to fetch all the orders. And then we have two separate queries for fetching customer for that particular order. Because we have two orders, we're executing n plus one queries, which is two plus one, which is three, which is exactly what we have here. One, two, and three. Now that we got all of that out of the way, we know how to utilize raw SQL in our entity framework and how we can get entirety of control over all the queries that are getting executed against the database. And there you have it, folks. That's how you would use raw SQL to fetch, update, create, or do whatever you like with your database while having the complete control Control over every step of the way. If you found this video useful, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the bell button. And as usual, I would like to invite you to join me in the comment section and leave your opinions about this topic or maybe post a question or two or give me something you think I missed. And finally, I would like to thank you for watching and wish you happy coding!